Uh, great uh, college basketball game. If you like defense, two really good defensive teams, two physical teams. Um, you got to give Rutgers a lot of credit. Um, came in, had the lead at halftime, and then we got up seven or eight. Crowd's going crazy, and they fought all the way back and tied it. I think a couple times um, they tied it. So give them credit. Um, thought our students were terrific. You know, they shot a low percentage in the second half. Our building was live. Uh, which really helps us because this league's so hard. Uh, you need those. You need that to, to get it done. So um, Anthony was great down the stretch. Daryl, I thought was really good in the second half. Um, uh, sticks with sticks. Felt like he was getting every rebound uh, out there and blocking shots. So um, we figured out how to win the game, and uh, we played a much better second half. And I told the guys to you gotta enjoy it. It's hard, man. You look at their scores on the road. In our league, they've, they've been possession games in almost every game, so proud of our guys. Questions, please. Patrick. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jack Lynch Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information, find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1 right now. This is Mason Miner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Mark, when, when you kind of look at how that first half unfolded, yeah. uh, trying to get the offense going, yeah. how much of that was on you guys maybe being a little – out of sorts, and how much of it was them doing doing their job? Well, I think we were playing a little fast, but we missed a lot of wide open ones because they were just trying to stop Anthony. They come. We had wide open threes in the corner. Uh, they were helping out the corner. We just didn't make them. You know, Sticks made a couple, um, and then we were over dribbling. They were coming to stop the drive. That was their deal. Make a shoot jump shots. Guys were taking two dribbles and should have been taking one and pitching it. We were standing. Uh, last three and a half minutes of the half, we moved better. We just didn't finish. You know, we got much better looks. So, but you got to give them credit. They're, they're really good defensively. They're long, they're really long. Guards are long. Point guard six seven. So, um, you know, we out rebound them and, and held the floor in transition. So those are two things we've really worked on. Was fixing that as much as anything a difference for you in the second half? Fixing you know, fix, just yeah, just more movement. Yeah, and. I didn't like some of the shots we took in transition. I thought we were playing a little too fast early. Anyway, our first two possessions, we turned it over. Um, I only ended up about a good 10 for the game or 11. But um, um, give them credit. And, and you know, we, we weren't our best. But when we had to be, we were good. You know, to go five down five to up eight or nine, whatever we did, we were really good in that stretch. So I give them a lot of credit. Um, with their own sticks. They had they had that big run early in the second half, and then did some good things late. Um, how much do those two kind of energize you guys when you, when you need a run? Well, you know they made they made fantastic plays. So you had Daryl's dunk, and then you had Sticks' three, and then you had Sticks' dunk, and those those that energizes no matter who's doing it. Um, so. Um, yeah, it energized the building, energized us. And at halftime, we just talked about, you know, keep your head up, you know, play with energy, play with confidence. And, um, you know, I, I think we're too late in the season to be hanging our heads on missed shots. I told them that after the game. And that, that, we missed them all year, guys. Quit hanging our heads. Let's, let's, just, let's just battle. And that was the disappointing part of the first half. Second half, we didn't hang our heads. And we just kept battling, kept battling. That's how we came out on top. Talk about when the offense isn't clicking, um, you know, how good this team can be defensively. That yeah. kind of care you guys. How crucial was that tonight? Well, we were terrific on defense. Now, they missed some shots on ball screens where we were guarded a certain way and we were giving them the foul on jumper. They missed three or four of those for us, which helps make one to start the second half. Um, but our defense was, was was great and sticks had a lot to do with it uh, down there. But our guys were good. Were good. I mean, um, I don't know how to pronounce his name, number one. He got going in the first half and made some mistakes defensively. We did a much better job on him in the second half. He made an unbelievable shot in the corner to tie it. We're shaking hands with him. So um, we, we just we worked, we really worked hard on defense the last two days. 
okay? Um, because that's what we that's who we need to be. And uh, we have some good individual defenders and guys that really competed defensively, and uh, that's how we came out on top. Andy in the middle. Coach, what would change for Daryl in the second half besides the opposite shots start falling? But well, um, he got to the rim. So he got, got to the rim in transition, um, got to the rim. We started to move better, so he got downhill on a layup. He's got to the rim, and then he got second chance points, and he was just active. Instead of moping, because they weren't guarding him, he got more active. So um, it's not like he's never been, you know, that's the way they guarded Daryl. Teams guard Daryl that way. So he just got to be active, and his energy level was different, his attitude was different. It's really, it's really that simple. Um, Sticks not only had his fifth straight double double, but he had a career high six blocks tonight. Yeah. Uh, what do you attribute, you know, his rim protection to in the late game five last game? Is he watching the film of Bruno or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Could we play last game? Iowa Garza. Yeah. Um, you know, I went to Garza a lot, um, and then tonight their big guy couldn't shoot, so Sticks could be around the rim a little bit more. Now we gave up a couple layups, and they, they made some great plays where Sticks jumped and they went to the big guy and he dunked it. Um, but uh, no, nah, he, he's just really confident right now. I mean, some of the shots he made were, were really tough shots and it, it's good to see. But defensively, Sticks is really, I don't know how many, you know, are, are, can guard like he can. And he can, we can switch ball screens if we have to, we did tonight, but his post defense has been great. Yeah. His timing's great, he's staying down, he's not going for shot fakes. He's given up you know, 30 or 40 pounds. So his rebounding, because he was able to stay around the basket, that helped him. And, you know, he just jumps really high and he's really long. So that, that helps him. Mark, how is this uh, Rutgers team different from the teams you've seen in the past? Um, one, they're deeper. And I know they were missing a kid tonight. So that, that hurt them. Um, but they're much more confident. And this team knows how to win. And some of the other Rutgers teams were learning how to win late last year. Well, they had a really good run in the Garden a couple of years ago, and then they were—you they, you could see some of the wins last year they were getting. And so now they know how to win. They believe they're going to win. And I could hear Pikel down there when they were making the run. This is what we do, you know. And if you watch film, they've done it at Iowa. They were down nine and came back and tied it. Um, the Illinois, they were right there. So that's just—that's just who they are. They don't ever quit. And. Uh, that's credit to him. He's a you know he's really a positive guy with his team. Mark, you, you mentioned some of the guys saying not to hang your head and miss some shots. Are you any concerned at all with Eric uh, as far as being a little tentative? I mean, you, you talk a lot about confidence. He doesn't yeah. have that confidence. Well, here's the deal. Am I am I thrilled with his shooting right now? Absolutely not. Right? He missed three wide open threes in the first half. Okay, ran out of bounds play for him in the second half. He didn't execute it like he wanted to shoot it. Okay, so that that's just part of where we are right now. Four assists, six rebounds, guarded the whole time. I mean, he's giving us something. And a lot of kids would, nah, you know, I'm not making shots. He's gonna make them. I, I believe in Eric. Okay, he's making them in practice. He made a big one against Iowa. Okay, and was he over six today? Yeah, whatever. So um, it's gonna be nice when he starts making them, right? Coach, how pivotal were those opening minutes in the second half where you guys were able to get some easy transition buckets yeah. and it seemed like everyone started to get settled down after that? Yeah, and, our, and, we, and we really guarded in that stretch, too. We were great defensively. We had energy. Um, and I just told him when he called tonight, I said, I love layups. I love layups. Just keep getting layups. We got a lot more layups in the second half. So got out on the break, uh, got some layups. You know, offense moved better, got some stuff there. So. Yeah, we had, to have, we had to have a good start to the second half, and we, and we did. Otherwise, it had been maybe too much pressure on us to, to make shots late in the game, and the really, only pressure was to make free throws, and our guys stepped up and did that. Can you talk about the growing role with Sorrell Smith and yeah. where he fits into this scheme? Yeah, uh, Sorrell just didn't make shots, and he made the runner in the lane, which was, was a great play. Um, defensively, He's used a real solid. He broke down once in the second half and gave up a layup because he was kind of got on the side of him for some reason. He didn't play as smart tonight as he normally plays, um, but he's been playing really consistently well for us. So I think right now we're seven deep. Okay, we're trying to figure out eight and nine. Okay, we 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 get that figured out. A lot of basketball left. 
Um, we get that figured out. I got to give some certain guys more confidence, and uh, and then you know then we'll, then we'll be we'll be fine. But right now we're not quite not quite where, where we need to be. Last one. Sorry, uh, kind of going off that, um, we talked a lot about the bench, but how much of being able to develop it has been harder this year because it seems like every game is like that? And, and is it a concern if you're still able to get it done with those top six or seven? -ish? Well, it is what it is. And, you know, we're going to have a – right now we've had rest in between games. Now we've got Tuesday, Friday. We'll, we'll see. Daryl was cramping out there. Uh, I gave him two days off because we've been grinding it mentally. Uh, showed a little bit tonight the way we played. Um, and um, but no, I, I got confidence we're going to get where we need to get with that group, and it's just hold it where it is. Don't have to do anything great. Just we're up four, hold it, hold it at four, guys. Two or three, four minutes. That's what you got to do. So uh, I got to give guys more confidence, and um, you know, just defend and rebound and, and make simple plays. That's really what it comes down to. But if we get to nine deep, we're going to be a good team. Thanks, Coach. Well played, Max.